Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, my name is Peter Langen. I'll be moderating the uh, discussion today. Uh, before I introduce our guests, can I just ask everyone if you can mute or turn off your cell phone? Thank you. Um, so our guest today is Mr. Hiromasa Yonakura, uh, who was chairman of Keidan Ren and also spent his career at Sumitomo Chemical Company Limited. He's now honorary chairman of Keidan Ren. The topic today, as you can see from your handout, is the TPP talks, the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations, which have gone on for many, many years um, and have generated an awful lot of controversy. Um, so uh, we have, of course, now uh, an opportunity to hear from somebody who was inside those negotiations um, as chairman of Kdan Ren um, and can uh, give us some further insights into what's ahead. So if I could ask you all to give a very warm welcome again to our guest, Mr. Hiromasa Yonakura. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. First of all, I would like to express my heartfelt condolence for the terrible tragedy uh, occurred in Paris by terrors. And I would like to pray for those who lost their lives in there. It is a great pleasure to be here with you today and I feel truly honored to have the opportunity to speak before the distinguished members of FCCJ. When I was chairman of Kedan Ren, the heaviest burden I had to carry is to hold press conference so many times. And uh, my secretary at Kedan Ren told me that I had 397 press conferences during my fourth uh, four-year terms. And I really feel relieved when I retired. Now I'm here at the invitation of the formidable FCCJ, and you know how I feel. But I hope you are lenient and warm-hearted audience. Today I would like to talk about TPP, Trade Pacific, uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, and the other economic partnership that Japan engaged in, and their potential contribution to the economic growth in Japan, Asia Pacific, and the world as a whole. Currently, the outlook for the world economy is becoming uncertain as the growth of China and emerging economies are slowing down. And Japanese economy lacks strength, not only in export, but also in consumer spending and production activities. But the fund fundamentals have not being seriously damaged, and I expect the Japanese economy to continue its moderate recovery. And I believe that now is the time for Japan to step up its efforts further to leave the years of deflation behind and get back on the track of strong and sustained growth. After the burst of the bubble economy in 1991, Japan plunged into stagnation that lasted for more than two decades. Burdened by prolonged deflation, Japan's GDP in nominal terms is far from growing, but actually contracted from fiscal 1993 to 2013. During the same period, GDP of the United States increased 2.4 times, 
South Korea 4.5 times and China as much as 16.1 times. It is not until the last few years that Japanese economy has <laughs> begun to show signs of emerging from its prolonged deflation. It's time to accelerate efforts in both the private and public sectors toward developing a new vibrant Japan that will achieve a strong, sustained growth. We in the Japanese business economy uh, co community have conviction that faced with problems of dec declining population and aging society, Japan needs to rebuild its economic growth potential quickly through innovation and economic partnership, two of the most important pillars of the revitalization effort. By making full use of our technological prowess, we should continue to strive to develop innovative, high value added products and services that meet evolving market needs. At the same time, we should work to establish high standard, ambitious economic partnership with the aim of developing an open, seamless, and integrated global market and creating new opportunities for growth. The United States and China are important trade partners, but it is estimated that in coming years, the U.S. economy will only grow at a moderate pace. As with China, its real GDP growth for the third quarter this year slowed to 6.9% in an annual basis, it was for the first time in in last six years that China growth rate fell to the six percent level, and it is an anticipated that the slow economic growth will become a new normal for China. Obviously, relying excessively on the U.S. and Chinese market is not a sustainable growth path for Japan. Instead, Japan should take full advantage of being located in the center of Asia Pacific, which encompasses those countries growing at the world's fastest rate. E economic partnership will provide Japan with closer connectivity with, with those high growth economies. By leveraging EPAs, we should bring in and capitalize on their dynamic growth and develop new market for our product and services in the region. To turn this vision into reality, I gave top priority to promoting economic partnership and cooperation when I became a chairman of Kedan Ren. And I read the efforts of Kedan Ren to call on the government to enter negotiations for FTA and EPAs with major trade partners. Our endeavors were rewarded by the start of negotiations for the Japan, China, South Korea, FTA, RCEP, or Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, TPP, and EU Japan, EPA, and other economic partnership. In June 2010, when Japan hosted APEC 2010 in Yokohama, Kedan Ren issued its first call for Japan joining the TPP. And in October of the same year, then Japan's Prime Minister and Democratic Party of Japan leader, Mr. Naoto Kang, announced 
that the government was considering its participation in the TPP negotiations. At that time, it was not well understood among the general public why Japan needs to join TPP. Many mistakenly believed that TPP could destroy our health insurance system, jeopardize food safety, or even threaten Japan's national, national sovereignty. To correct such misunderstandings and communicate with what the TPP is all about, Kedan Ren has been working on the various public initiatives and advocacy campaigns. As a part of Kedan Ren's advocacy initiatives, I promoted the backstage the Citizens Forum, calling for Japan's early participation in TPP negotiations, a private sector-led initiative that began in October 2011. The forum, chaired by Dr. Motoshige Ito, professor of the University of Tokyo's Graduate School of Economics, consisted of academic experts, chief executives of agriculture businesses, medical institutions, lawyers, and representatives of business associations and labor unions. In its resolution of October 26, uh, 2011, the forum called on Japanese government to demonstrate strong political leadership to realize early participation in TPP negotiations. All these efforts push the government to make a decision. In March 2013, soon after the coalition of the Liberal Demo Democratic Party and New Cometo assumed powers as ruling parties, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe decided to participate in the TPP negotiations. Japan joined the talks in July of the same year after, and after many rounds of negotiations and great amount of efforts and <coughs> perseverance, the ministers of 12 TPP countries announced the successful conclusion of their negotiations this past October. We at Kedan Ring welcome this remarkable achievement, and I would like to take this opportunity to express my deep admiration and offer heartfelt con congratulations to the government of Japan and the other members of the countries and to all for who have devoted significant effort to make it happen. TPP is definitely one of the most important strategies for Japan's growth. The partnership will integrate, <coughs> help integrate the markets in Asia Pacific, connect value chains, seamlessly across the area by eliminating tariffs and non-tariff barriers, while also ha harmonizing systems and regulations. Global companies <coughs> usually procure parts and materials from multiple countries to produce their product. If tariff exists, every time their components cross a national border, they are penalized by the cost of tariffs. Elimination of tariffs among all TPP nations will promote cross-border procurement and trade within the region. And all companies allow companies greater flexibility in determining 
where to buy, make, and sell. On the contrary, if Japan did not participate in TPP, tariffs will continue to be imposed on Japanese export and import, and doing business in Japan will become more costly than doing business in TPP countries. And eventually, businesses might end up moving their production or R&D facilities to the outside of Japan. That will cause serious damage to Japan's industrial competitiveness. In contrast, by participating in par partnership, not only can Japan avoid being placed at such a disadvantage, but can also retain businesses, technologies, and human capitals, and take full advantage of Asia-Pacific dynamic market growth. Moreover, since the TPP will make Japan's closely connected with high growth markets in Asia Pacific, Japan's att attractiveness as business location can be maintained or even enhanced, and that may lead to an increase in direct investment into Japan. Inbound investment will create new job opportunities and bring in state of art technologies and management know-how from abroad, providing vital energy for the growth of Japanese economy. Japan can also greatly benefit from the liberalization of trading services. As trade is liberalized in such areas as finance, insurance, telecommunications, transportation, retail, energy, and constructions, New opportunities will open up for Japanese service companies to expand their business overseas. Besides, Japanese companies may benefit from wider choices of more convenient services, such as banking services, for example. The rules under TPP will also facilitate trading goods by encouraging smooth processing in customs and border procedures. For example, TPP parties have agreed to provide expedited custom procedures for express shipments. This is expect expected to promote trade in fresh food and other items that need speedy delivery. In addition, decolonizing exporters need to know how their goods will be treated on arrival in a foreign port. TPP has an advanced rulings mechanism. This requires TPP countries to provide decisions on key custom matters such as tariff classifications in advance at the request of an importer or exporter. Regarding investment rules, TPP provides greater protection of intellectual property rights and also requires non-discriminatory investment policies and protections. Specifically, it provides in investment protections such as national treatment, most favored nation treatment, prohibition of exploration without proper compensation, and prohibition of performance request requirements such as local content, technology localization requirements. The TPP also provides a neutral and transparent in international arbitration of investment dispute, including what is called ISDS, or Investor State Dispute Settlement. 
In addition, the TPP parties have agreed to provide access to each other's government procurement markets through transparent, predictable, and non-discriminatory rules, while they have also agreed to ensure that their state-owned enterprises do not discriminate against the enterprises, goods, and services of other TPP members. These commitments are expected to create new opportunities for Japanese companies to engage in infrastructure development businesses in such TPP members' countries as Malaysia, Vietnam, and to contribute to their sustainable growth. TPP provides foundations for integrated, highly efficient value chains across Asia Pacific. But in order to unleash the full potential of this partnership, having the agreement signed by the parties in, is not enough. enough. It is essential to ensure all the Japanese, all, all the business clearly understand new rules and fully utilize them for enhancing their competitiveness and accelerating their growth. In particular, TPP will facilitate cross-border trade and investment and help small and medium-sized enterprises ex <coughs> expand their businesses in overseas market. That will contribute to energizing local economies and creating new job opportunities. The governments of TPP parties <coughs> should fully explain these benefits and encourage all businesses to take full advantage of them. It has been claimed, however, that the TPP may have a negative impact on Japan's agricultural sector. It is true that the challenges lie ahead, but they are not created by the TPP. We have long been concerned about the productivity of Japanese agriculture and its future as a food self-sufficiency rate is down to approximately 40% and about 60% of full-time farmers are 65 years of age or older. A TPP has simply made it more urgent for us to tackle these challenges. The government, the agriculture sector, and the business community as a whole should work together to carry out all the necessary measures to enhance the competitiveness of Japan's agriculture and transform it into a growth industry. We should turn the challenges into opportunities for change and reform. And I believe we can. In order to strengthen production capabilities, it is necessary to further promote the entry of business corporations into our agricultural sector, while also expanding the size of farm acres through consolidation of farmland. At the same time, to address the problem of and the aging and declining farming population, more must be done to encourage young people to get interested and in work in the agriculture businesses. It, it is also imperative for our agriculture sector to enhance their own, their growth potential by expanding export in cooperation with other industries and implementing forward integration to higher value added downstream businesses. And there is, this is a where business corporation can make 
a, a substantial contribution by using their technologies and management know-how. As the chairman of Kedan Ren, I press ahead with a wide range of initiatives to strengthen Japan's agriculture business and promote cooperation between business community and the agriculture sector. For example, in 2011, Kedan launched its future city model project called uh, Sunrise Project, a private sector-led initiative aimed at accelerating innovation and boosting the competitiveness of Jap Japan's industry. Eleven projects are now underway, and among them is the Saija Culture Innovation City Project, based in Saija City, of Ehime Prefecture, Shikoku. In this understanding, undertaking, Sumitomo Chemical, where I served chairman, established a cultural joint venture, Sunrise Farm Saijo, with J.A. Saijo, a local unit of Japan agriculture cooperatives and other industry partners. We have been working to develop a new model of an efficient, competitive, and innovative agriculture business by using ICTs for farming, including GPS and network cameras. In addition, to promote new business development in the agriculture sector, KDN member companies put together a report in July 2000. 13, describing approximately 300 projects that they implemented and expected to contribute to revitalizing Japan's agriculture, forestry, and fishery industries. Kedan Ren also established a joint working group with JA in November 2017 to explore ways to strengthen the cooperation between the agriculture sector and the other business sectors. Building on these initiatives, we at Kedan Ring will continue to provide strong support for enhancing the competitiveness of Japan's agriculture. It is significant that TPP negotiations have been concluded, but TPP itself is not an ultimate goal. It represents one of the more uh, one of the important steps toward the goals of realizing open trade and regional integration across Asia Pacific. Kedan Ren has been calling for establishing the TPP Japan. Uh, China, South Korea, FTA, and RCEP, eventually building uh, FTAP, uh, or Free Trade Area of Asia Pacific by the year 2020, which includes India and China, two of the highest growth economies in the region. It is expected 10 ASEAN countries will be integrated into a single trade, a single free trade market at the end of this year. We in the business community strong, strongly hope the conclusion of TPP negotiations and the ASEAN, ASEAN's move give impetus to the progress of an ongoing negotiations for these three trade agreement. Japan, China, and South Korea, which together account for approximately 70% of East Asia GDP, have yet to reach a free trade agreement. If tariff barriers are eliminated under the FTA, 
it will substantially increase the cost competitiveness of value chains covering the three markets. It means that, for example, you can make components in Japan, put them together in South Korea, and export to China at a significant, significantly lower cost. Kezana has stressed the importance of the en and the enormous value of the Japan, China, South Korea FDA on many occasions, such as the Asia Business Summit. At the Japan, China, South Korea Summit meeting, which was held quite recently for the first time in three and a half years, the leaders of the three nations agreed to make further effort toward accelerating a trilateral FDA negotiation to realize a comprehensive, high-level, and mutual, mutually uh, beneficial agreement. We, in the Japanese business community, very much welcome the result of the summit meeting and look forward to all the conclusion of the FDA. I believe that the TPP representing approximately 40% of global GDP will serve as an accelerator for the negotiations for Japan, China, South Korea, FDA, and RCEP, and will also facilitate the progress toward establishment of FTAP. We have so far talked about the economic value and significance of TPP, but TPP is also vitally important in, in that Japan and the United States, two of the world's major economic powerhouses, have participated in the effort to set high standard new rules for trade and investment, which can be, 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 become de facto global standards. In terms of the rule making and sta standard setting, the EU Japan EPA can also be an important platform. EU is not just stands out as a, the world largest single market, but also is Japan's most important economic partner along with the United States. Moreover, EU is negotiating a TTIP, Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership with the United States. For years, we at the Japanese business community have been calling for the establishment of EU Japan EPA. In July 2011, I led Kedan Resmission to Europe, visiting Paris, Berlin, London and Brussels and called on government and business leaders to support immediate start of EU-Japan EPA negotiations. To address EU's major concern over non-tariff barriers, I suggested that the EU and Japanese business leaders come together to discuss the issues on <coughs> on a sector-by-sector -sector basis, work out viable solutions by drawing on their hands-on knowledge and experience and put them forward to the government. My suggestions were supported by Mr. Harman von Lampai, the pres then president of the European Un Council, as well as German Chancellor, Madame Merkel, uh, British Prime Minister uh, David Cameron. And in March 12, 2012, Kedan Ringham Business Europe hosted the first EU Japan Industry Dialogue meeting in Brussels. The joint initiatives still continues, and in April this year, we held our fourth meeting in Brussels. From this industry dialogue, new initiative for regulatory cooperation has emerged. If regulations and standards concerning the 
environment, safety, and health and other important areas remain varied, varied uh, from country to country. It may negatively affect trade and investment activities involving those countries. Such situation can be prevented through regulatory coordination and harmonization promoted by the cooperation between business communities of Japan and EU. EU, Japan, EPA, and TPP, along with TTIP, can provide vital platform for Japan, EU, and United States to work together to pursue regulatory cooperation and establish high standard, co coherent, and harmonized rules. Building on the efforts under this partnership, Japan, EU, and the United States should work on the harmonization of their regulations and standards, and then roll out the result to China, India, and other emerging economies. If this is realized, we, the Japanese business, can fully utilize our best-in-class technologies and know-how for meeting the needs of these emerging economies and take advantage of new growth opportunities overseas. If the FTAP is established in Asia Pacific and the EU Japan EPA is concluded, a vast free trade area will be formed that encompasses approximately 80% of the global GDP and 50% of the world population. As one of the Asia's Asia Pacific's most advanced economies, Japan has duty and responsibility to demonstrate leadership together with the US and the EU in creating an open, seamless, and integrated market, setting out high standard rules that will promote robust and sustainable growth of the entire world economy. We in the Japanese business community will remain deeply committed to promoting free trade and economic uh, partnership and supporting the efforts of the Japanese government to bring the ongoing EPA negotiations to a successful conclusion. In closing, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to the FCCJ for giving me this special privilege. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, so we'll open the floor to questions. It's working. No. Can you hear me? Sorry. Sir. And if you can introduce yourself and who you work for. The first questions will be limited to the working press. Uh, my name is Hiro Kuchita, independent, and I'm, I write for Yukan Fuji daily uh, evening paper. Uh, I'd like to uh, know your prospect of the next couple of years of the Asian economy. The Chinese economy is a bubble. It will burst. And that will have a tremendous effect to uh, you know, TPP nations. How are you going to protect uh, TPP in a region economy from China's bubble bust? Thank you. I think China, the uh, Chinese economy will continue to grow. But the uh, uh, growth rate will be down to 6 to 6.9, anyway, 6% level. Responding or as a result of a uh, structural uh, reforms, China will have to take 
from now on, but still growing. And you can hear the Chinese, Chinese economy is down in the newspaper, but you can see how many Chinese people coming in and uh, buying lots of stuff, uh, goods in, in Japan. It really shows they, they are getting richer, which means economy itself is growing. And uh, so when we, we, we do not stop at the TPP only. We have to go on and on to, to the point where we a, uh, establish a, a free, uh, free trade market, uh, Asia-Pacific uh, uh, Asia market. And uh, in there, a, a China is also a part of APEC. APEC countries. So uh, I think uh, China's economy will affect uh, uh, all the Asian countries' economy as a, as a whole, but not so seriously. I think uh, uh, two or three years of adjustment we have to make, but that that will be a uh, really made up for by a uh, free trade agreement, TPP. TPP uh, ought to be ratified uh, as quickly as possible. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the future outlook of Asia. Okay, uh, Anthony. <clears throat> Excuse me, Anthony Rowley, uh, Singapore Business Times. Um, before I ask my question, I'd like to just make a brief observation. Thank you for a very interesting speech and for delivering it in English. I, I, and you've, I believe you've said you've given 397 press briefings over the past few years. Very few of those are in English, and I think it would be rather nice if Kaden Ren could actually give uh, periodic English language press conferences in the same way, for instance, that Jitro does. I think uh -huh. you would increase your exposure that way. Um, anyway, the question is, um, as you, you know, as you say, TPP offers enormous opportunities, but there's a vast area of China, Northeast Asia, Eurasia, where, where the growth potential is incredible. And um, to some extent, China is doing something about this to exploit this through the AIIB, for instance. Mm -hmm. Do you think Japan should join that venture in order for Japanese <laughs> business to gain exposure to those markets? Okay. I, uh, first of, the first part of your question, we have uh, a uh, 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 Director General of uh, Kedan Ray here, so we ought to ask them, uh, ask them to do so. Uh, as I said, it's we should uh, we should enhance the ability to really a uh, uh, send out our views to the foreign press as well. Uh, the questions about AIIB, the question which Japanese government raised is that governability of AIIB, which means how the decision is made in a transparent way and how a uh, uh, credit judgment criteria, what kind of criteria they are using, they are, uh, they are not unknown yet. And uh, 
So whatever AIIB does, we have Jetro, uh, I mean, a, a JBIC, JICA, those uh, national financial institution, institutions for assisting a, uh, de developing countries. And also we have ADB, Asia, Asian uh, and Development Bank. And uh, those groups can, can cooperate together with the AIIB, which means that, that to, to make sure that cooperation will be really workable is really more important than Japan's participation in AIIB itself. And in Asia, we, there's a vast need for financing of the uh, infrastructure. They, they are saying eight trillion dollars or something like that within 10 years or so. And one AIIB or ADB, I don't think they can, uh, they can afford to do so. We have to create also a uh, bond market in, in Asia. And uh, we, we should increase a financial ability of, of ADB, JICA, and JBIC. And Japanese go uh, government uh, uh, appears to be ready to do so. Thank you. Yeah. Stanley. Stanley White from Reuters. I wanted to ask you about capital expenditure. Recently, economics minister Amari has been uh, uh, making very strong comments in public, calling on Japanese companies to increase uh, capital expenditure. But I wonder if you, do you have any sense that maybe these comments are a little bit too strong, or do you feel maybe perhaps the government is putting too much pressure on the corporate sector? And the other question I have is, uh, in recent years, it's been very difficult to get capital expenditure to rise. Why do you think this is, and how could we solve this problem? Thank you. Capital expenditure, when we talk about, uh, from the point of view of the, uh, the businesses, a, uh, whether we have a, a bright future or bright uh, growing demand for the product there, they are producing. And in order to increase the capacity, they, they put, put their money into those uh, productive facilities. And so if the economic out, outlook uh, made by Japanese ent uh, business enterprises, uh, it's not bright. if it is not bright, then they, they are hesitant to, to, to make a uh, investment. But Mr. Amari's uh, other government officials, sometimes a uh, what, what they call internal reserves. We have too much of internal reserves, and therefore we should spend it into a, 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 a capital investment. And they, they do not understand what the internal reserves are. Internal reserves is just a left, leftover uh, of your pro, 
of your profit, and your profit after you pay, you pay your dividend to your shareholders. And they are not kept as a cash. It really turns into a uh, plant facilities and other other form of asset. And sometimes we have to we are criticized of having uh, much of a cash. But the, those cash are the one we need to pay out for our wages, for for a, uh, the price of materials and so forth. And so, so I think they they should learn uh, the uh, what actual business is. But we we are ready to 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 make an investment. And uh, whenever we do, uh, one, one, one of the things I, I used to emphasize is that uh, uh, all those CEOs and management should have courage enough to, to take a risk, calculate a risk, for plant uh, uh, construction and others. We ought to do that. Okay. Thank you. So, gentleman at the back first, yes, cameraman, and then it's you, sir. IWJ の安倍と申します。日本語で失礼いたします。That's okay. I translate it. <笑><笑>じゃあお,お願いします。えっ、ー、と住友科学は、えー、モンサントと提携し、えー、日本におけるエージェントの立場にあります。モンサントが発売している除草剤ラウンドアップと遺伝子組み換え作物はそれぞれ人の健康や生態系への不安やマイナスの影響が指摘されてますが安全性についてどう担保されているのでしょうか<笑>続けてよろしいでしょうか、はい、また米倉さんご自身が経団連会長の時代に TPP への参加を訴えてきましたが TPP に入ることで遺伝子組み換え食品の表示義務が規制緩和され、米国のように表示されなくなる危険性があると指摘されています。表示義務がなくなれば、それそれは嘘です。ちゃんともう表示さ表示されるようになってるんで、その心配はありません。それからモンサントとの関係を言いますと、モンサントには我々が除草剤をライセンスしてます。彼らのランドアップというのはもうすでにあのプラントイミュニティがあって免疫性が出て効かなくなってるんで我々の除草剤を使わないとそれができない我々は何もモンサントのいやあのそういった遺伝子組み換えのものを日本で販売するということは全然やっておりませんそれは誤解のないようにしてください終わりです<笑> The question I write he, he asked is that we had a, we had a, a, a business relationship with Monsanto of the United States in the field of agriculture and uh, his question is that we are really serving as their 
a partner in Japan and selling a a uh, DHA uh, uh, modified product. And I said, we, we do not represent them. And simply our relationship is that we, their, 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 their uh, herbicide is not so effective these days. Probably some, some of you remember that their, their stock, stock price fell down because of this was released. So we help them with our herbicide. And if they use our herbicide, then uh, yeah, they, they can uh, use their own herbicide for DNA uh, uh, modified uh, uh, soybeans. And so nothing to do with that. Good. Thank you. Okay, the gentleman here. Thank you. My name is uh, Richard Susilo from Indonesia. Uh, I would like to refresh again your, your order <laughs> to the Director General of Kedan, and it's very uh, it's an honor for me if you have an uh, English press conference in Kedan, so please invite me also, thank you. <laughs> um, I would like to mention your, your speech, remind you again, the, uh, you said self-sufficiency. In Japan, for the agriculture, is 40%. Mm. And the rest, 60%, is because of the uh, 65 years of, or more than that, the, uh, the uh, elderly people in Japan. So actually, how could you rejuvenate this, uh, this, this uh, agriculture sector while the uh, majority people of 60%, or maybe more than that, is elderly people? And um, this is actually, I believe, is a weak point, is a minus point of Japan. So no wonder the farmers also against of the TPP. And not only that, uh, the lack of technology, or maybe lack of knowledge, like my country in Indonesia, or other Myanmar, or other uh, small countries. So do you think those or small countries like Indonesia is, uh, is, uh, is uh, good for joining this TPP or TPP, or maybe uh, the other side, Probably the people believe this is only a colonization of this uh, industrial country only. Thank you. No, you can you you can join you can join TPP, uh, uh, but you can't join TPP only in agriculture or anything. You have to uh, join TPP across the board. Uh, but whether. Uh, 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 your, your country is not uh, you're well developed in industry or not, uh, uh, it has nothing to do with TPP participation. For example, Vietnam is a member of uh, TPP. And um, how to rejuvenate a uh, farming population in Japan is really uh, it's quite simple to make our, our culture profitable business. And uh, believe it or not, there are a growing number of young people coming into our culture making quite a lot of profit. And uh, so, but they always keep quiet because majority of those, uh, I shouldn't say it in publicly, but, uh, but uh, uh, usually keep quiet because of the other uh, members of uh, our cultural cooperatives. And uh, uh, 
a company is doing uh, farming a, uh, in China as well. And uh, uh, the reason is that to, a, uh, to respond to the request by the local government in China, uh, we should uh, produce and, and supply safe, safe food to the public. And we are doing so. And uh, so uh, it is a uh, rather, we can't, we can't do it rapidly, but, but we can increase the number of young people coming into agricultural uh, businesses. And uh, one more example I, I could give you, and my, my wife always complained, is that we grow a uh, garlic bulb, uh, a baby bulb, to supply to our garlic growers in Aomori. That's a huge a garlic, and it's very, very expensive. Something like 500 yen per bulb. But those farmers growing, uh, uh, growing this bulb with the supply of the, uh, of the seed bulb, uh, they, 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 they become so rich and uh, uh, build a, a beautiful house, like uh, they call it the garlic palace. And my wife complains <laughs> is that why, why the, can, you, can you make a, a palace while your, your, your customers are really building such a beautiful houses? But uh, it is true. Okay, so on the, um, the topic of the garlic palace, we'll uh, finish the press conference. We've run out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, so my last task today is to present Mr. Yonekura with a one-year honorary membership of the oh, Foreign Correspondents Club. So hope to thank see you, you again. Thank you, thank, you, thank you very much. If you can again give thanks to our guest. Thank you. Thank you very much.